Hey guys, it's Fawnsky here, and today we're back in Elite Dangerous, and we're actually taking a look at the update 1.1 beta. Now this beta isn't actually on the main server, it's on kind of a test server sort of thing. Uh, you can actually see in the bottom left of the screen as well, just a little kind of debug information, I guess. Um, but yeah, so this has a fair few changes uh, and stuff added to it. Uh, there's a lot of, there's well, there's not a lot of features, but there are a few features. There's a lot of balancing, though. There's also a few bug fixes and some audio stuff. Uh, so we'll go through some of these things. I'm not going to go through all of the balancing because, as always with these big patches from Frontier, uh, it's just, there's a ton of stuff. Uh, it's just too much to go through. So there will be a link to the patch notes in the video description, and I would suggest checking that out if you're interested. Um, but yeah, so let's start off with the features. So... We have community goals. Now these are basically uh, things like, th the one that I've seen so far in the beta is uh, when you sell food at a station, uh, that goes towards the community goal and there are rewards for doing well in that goal. I'm not sure if the rewards are really that great. I mean, I think the, um, the topmost player, like the person who delivered the most goods or whatever, only received about 20,000 credits. Uh, Although there were also some other bonuses as well, like I think trade goods were a little bit cheaper. I think it was medals or something. Um, so that's, but that seems to be how the community goals will work. It, I mean, we're going to have to wait until we see more of them, I think, because you can't, you obviously can't decide how the entire system is going to work just based on one example. But it, it could be interesting. Um, I think it's probably going to be a bit of work needed in kind of balancing the goals versus the rewards. But uh, that's, you know, that's how all these things go. So it'll be interesting to see how that. Uh, takes place, especially once it's in the full game. So the next thing is we've got 1000 light year route planning. Now, I don't know if there was actually a limit on the route planning uh, previously. There probably was, but I mean, you could actually plan uh, a fairly long route. The problem was it would take a really long time because the system wasn't optimized. Uh, it has been optimized now. It seems to plot routes a lot further, or a lot faster, I should say. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And yeah, I haven't I haven't actually tried a really long route, but I mean it plotted out a hundred light year route in what five seconds or something, so that's far better than it used to be. Uh, we've also got a discovered by a tag for planets or for systems, I think that it actually is. So what that means is if you're the very first explorer to come across a system, uh, and you sell that information, I, I imagine that you have to sell the information. Uh, to Universal Cartographics to actually receive this tag, but that system will then be tagged with your name, basically. So that's pretty cool. It's, it's a nice touch for the explorers, uh, I think. We've also got Pilots Federation uh, decals for the ranks. I haven't actually seen any of these, but the thing is, because this is on a new server, uh, we don't actually have any of our progress transferred over. So it's basically creating whole new uh, characters or commanders, whatever you want to call them, and starting from scratch. Now, it is easier starting from scratch because Frontier has given us all 100,000 credits to start off with. A number of ships have been reduced to 100 credits, so like the Type 9, the Viper, the Type 6, and the Cobra, they're all 100 credits each. So um, it is easy to get a start. And of course, there is a bit of an exploit with the Type 9 where you can basically buy the Type 9 for 100 credits and sell some of its components for 2 million credits. Rinse and repeat that, and you can see why I was an, an Imperial Clipper <laughs> for part of this video. Um, so yeah, but what it means starting out from scratch is that we just haven't ranked up for the time being at the moment, so that I didn't see any decals for that, but uh, who knows, once I play a bit more of the beta, I guess that might happen. And we've also got top benefactors added to the system map. Now I'm not quite sure what this actually is, I think that this is probably something to do with the um, community goals like the person who contributes the most to the community goal will be listed in the system map or something like that but I'm not 100% sure about that um, so yeah I guess that one might need a little bit further research uh, okay so that's basically it for the features uh, but let's take a look at the balancing now so I've picked out some of the ones that I consider to be the most important in terms of the balancing uh, like I said previously there is a ton of balancing that's happened that's gone on and all sorts of tweaks and that sort of thing. But yeah, so these are some of the big ones. So shield cells have been balanced. They've basically been nerfed. So they take more power to use, they come with less charges, and the charges cost more. Um, these changes aren't surprising. There's been a push for a long time, basically since release, to have the shield cells nerfed, and Frontier did say that they were going to balance them. So yeah, it's, it's not a surprise, realistically. Um, 
and they're still going to work the same as they did before it's just you'll have to be more careful with how you use them you won't be able to go into a fight and know that you've got 18 shield cells and that you can spam them basically as much as you want so I don't think it's a bad change it's going to take a bit of getting used to if you've based your combat style around that but um, all in all it's probably not a huge deal but we'll probably have to see how it goes once it's in the real world uh, so yeah it's I don't think it's too bad a change though Chaff has also been balanced so that it comes now with less ammo and the ammo costs more. Um, so from what I saw it was I think 10, maybe 11 uses. So I think and previously it was 30 so that's a pretty that's a pretty big decrease. Um, I think it might be a little bit too much but then again you don't really use Chaff that much at least I don't personally so who knows I think it's not that bad. So we've also got the clipper has been fixed, so that look, this is the Imperial Clipper, so that now mass locks things. It actually was bugged previously where it wouldn't mass lock anything, uh, so you know, you you would basically, I think it would also get mass locked by other ships um, that it shouldn't be. So that's been fixed, so that's good. Now one of the big ones is interdiction can now be a crime. So if you're going to interdict something and you don't want to get a fine, that that person or NPC that you're interdicting needs to have a bounty. If they don't have a bounty, it is considered to be a crime. So this may cut down on a lot of the um, the kind of griefing piracy that goes on. I'm not talking like legitimate piracy if there is such a thing, but more the uh, the kind of a player interdicting another player five or six times in a row just because they can. Maybe this will cut it down, maybe it won't, I'm not sure. If, if the person doesn't care about getting a fine, then you know it's not going to really cause a problem. Well, it's not going to stop them doing it, I should say. But anyway, it's a pretty cool thing, and it, it, it also makes more sense. I mean, it didn't really make much sense that uh, players could pull any ship out of Super Cruise just because they wanted to, basically. So you do need a reason to pull that ship out of Super Cruise now. So I think that's pretty good. And another big change that a lot of people should be happy about is friendly fire has been changed. So now, basically a ship has a threshold of damage that it has to take before it will become hostile. So if you if you shoot the ship uh, a couple of times now, it won't automatically become hostile unless you've done a ton of damage to it. So if you hit it with a railgun or something, or two railguns, then it'll, it'll probably turn hostile because you will have overgone, like gone over that damage threshold. But if you just clip it with your multi cannons or your beam laser or something like that, it should be okay. And it will also, basically if the shields recharge, then it will forget that damage and it will go back to, like it'll be as if it never happened. Or also if 30 seconds passes without any further damage, like without you damaging the ship any further. So that's, that's a really good change. I mean, friendly fire was easy enough to um, avoid once you kind of worked out what was going on, like how the ships would behave around you and you just had a bit of situational awareness. But I mean, even, you know, the best pilots, I think they would still, every now and then, have one of those security ships just go dodging straight through their crosshairs. So this is a good change, I think. Uh, another one is that stations should now no longer attack when police or security services uh, find a bounty on a player. So previously if you were going into a station, say you were going into dock and you had a bounty on you and the uh, system security scanned you and they discovered that bounty, the station would open up on you and just blow you up instantly basically. So now the station basically won't attack. Uh, it will. The, the system security will still attack but the station itself won't. I don't know if this is still the case if the station scans you and discovers it. Um, but anyway, if this is if what the patch notes say is if, if the security service discovers the bounty, the station will no longer attack you. So it gives you a couple of options, I guess. The first is you could run for the uh, station and hope that you get in and dock before the security services blow you up. Or you could turn around and run away and you know try to break out of the station's mass lock and jump into super cruise. But either way, you shouldn't get blown up straight away by a station anymore, so that's pretty cool. Now the next thing... Seeking Luxuries has been nerfed. Now I actually did a video on these um, a, w a little while ago just showing how it all works but it seems that especially since players have worked out how to kind of manipulate the trading system to so that um, the Seeking Luxuries would stay around for a while it's it's definitely I think Frontier realized it was a bit of a silly system so it will still exist uh, but I think they'll be a lot rarer they'll be a lot harder to come across so Probably not much of a surprise, um, given how easy it made trading, or at least that sort of trading. At the same time, um, hopefully they will find some way of making regular trading a little bit better, because I mean the fact that people were jumping on it so much probably indicates that there's a reason for that. 
Uh, but anyway, let's not get too much into that because it'll probably cause a bit of controversy. Uh, next thing is combat bonds now scale based on the ship type. Now this is really cool and it makes a lot of sense. I mean previously combat bonds were basically, I think, every single ship in a combat zone would give you 3,000 credits. Uh, it didn't matter if that was an eagle or an anaconda, you blew it up, you get 3,000 credits. Now it's actually, it's like an eagle, I think, well, I don't remember the exact numbers, although you should uh, see on the screen a bit of combat zone footage. But now it's like an anaconda, I think, was about 18,000 credits, a python was around 18, I think a viper was 11,000, and an eagle might have been 5,000, I can't remember. But it makes a lot more sense, basically, especially if you're hunting down those high-value targets. They are actually high-value now. I mean, uh, it's still kind of... You could argue that 18,000 isn't really very many credits for taking down an anaconda, and I'd kind of agree with you, given that wanted anacondas can often go, you know, a 70,000 credit bounty or something like that, but still, it's far better than 3,000 credits per ship, and it makes uh, going to a combat zone or a war zone for the purpose of making credits far more viable. So I think that's pretty cool. And one other thing is that the pirate ships or wanted NPCs in resource extraction sites will no longer spawn infinitely. So basically what this means is that if you did bounty hunting, like NPC bounty hunting, in a resource extraction site, that may not be viable anymore. Um, I haven't checked this yet myself to see how much, how, how badly this change has affected it, but it seems that the idea is that you're not going to find just an infinite stream of NPCs anymore. So I'd imagine that once you, uh, if you still wanted to do it, you could basically go to the extraction site, hunt down those ships, and then jump out and jump back in again and they would likely respawn or a new set would respawn or something like that but you're not going to be able to stay there for like two or three hours at a time and just have constant waves of enemies coming at you so I'm not quite sure why they decided to do that change but they've done it so I guess if you want to do that sort of uh, bounty hunting you're going to have to do it at nav beacons now unless you can find somewhere else that does have a constant spawn of ships but yeah, so, well, that's uh, that's a lot of rambling about balancing. Um, those are, I think, I think those are probably the big changes of the patch. Now, it could still be that some of these things will be changed, because obviously this patch hasn't gone live yet, it's still in beta testing. Uh, so depending on feedback and that sort of thing, Frontier may decide to change some things. They also may add some additional things. Uh, that's hard to say, I mean, this, I mean, in... In, before the game's release, they would do that sort of thing, like they would, you know, the betas would um, get updated, the major betas, you'd have, you know, you'd have your features and then they'd play around with that a little bit, but this is the first big update since release, so we don't really know how they're going to do things like that. But yeah, so there's also been some audio changes, I'm not really going to go through that. Um, but let me see if I can mention a couple, if I scroll down far enough. So yeah, we've got, uh, so apparently things like stations have different ambient sounds. Uh, there's kind of, the way the boost works is kind of different now. There's different audio, or improved audio, they say, on the docking bay lifts. It's all that sort of thing. So some of it is um, pretty difficult to notice, and you just kind of be like, was that how it was before? I'm not really sure. There's also other things that are easily noticeable, like, for example, when you uh, when the power plant capacity, when you're using too much power, basically, there's actually a voice warning for that. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, so that's um, there's a lot of changes. So like I said, the patch notes will be linked in the video description. But yeah, so I think I'll end this one here. Um, I may have some videos coming out about like the Type 9 and that sort of thing, now that I can actually uh, afford them because they're so cheap in the beta. Um, so that would be pretty cool, I think. But yeah, so I think I'll end this one here. So until next time, I've been Vosco. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.